Welcome back everyone to theCUBE's live coverage here on the floor in Las Vegas for VMware Explore 2024. I'm John Furrier, host of theCUBE with Dave Vellante. Brent Ellis is here, senior analyst at Forrester, Forrester Research. Brent, thanks for coming on theCUBE. Thank you. Love the analyst angle, get the perspective. We can riff amongst ourselves, analyze, pontificate. That's us. You got the data. <laughs> um, you know, this is our 15th year covering VMworld with theCUBE live on the floor. Um, the change is radical, uh, obviously, with Broadcom. And, you know, time. VMware is settling into its new regime. Yeah. Uh, and Hawk Tan has been clear as day from everything he says he does, and we mean business. Now, I think the cloud comment about cloud's bad and evil and the three Cs, I think it's a little bit over the top, personally. I think hybrid cloud is one. But I get their, I get their, their direction. Mm -hmm. Build the product for on-prem for the enterprise. Leverage the assets, that is the installed de facto standard yeah. in most operating IT, IT shops. Yeah. What's your take of the show so far? I mean, it's quite a bit smaller than the last VMware Explorer that I was at. Uh, I'd say it's like a third the size, roughly. Yeah, right. um, but I kind of think that was by design. I think that's what they wanted. Um, and they wanted the people here that are, you know, dyed in the wool VMware customers. Um, I was talking to a customer earlier and they said that they were looking forward to this show in particular because this is going to be the first time where VMware by Broadcom gets to articulate their vision. Um, and they were kind of waiting for that before deciding how to move forward. And what was their reaction? Do you have a sense? Um, you know, this particular client has a lot of on-premise resources and that don't make sense in a cloud environment. So for them, this makes a whole lot of sense because they need the same sort of kind of underlying infrastructure patterns. They're doing a lot of cloud native work, they're doing AI work, but it doesn't make sense for them to be using AWS or Azure or any of the hyperscalers that are out there because all of their stuff happens you know, within a farm context. So broadly, you know, uh, I think we saw some IDC data up there, and, and, it, and the fine print said Forrester, I don't know if you saw that. Yeah. It was IDC, they said IDC, but then you look at the fine print, it said IDC, Forrester, so it was kind of a mashup. Like yeah. Vendors do that sometimes to make their case. But the, the point is, they, they'll make the case that the, the cloud is more expensive mm -hmm. than on-prem as a blanket statement. We know it depends, uh, but for that, client, that customer, yeah. uh, it's the case that the TCO is probably going to favor. But what's your research radar tell you, you know, on balance? What, how are clients thinking about it? Where, where is the TCO actually advantageous for a VMware uh, versus not? Well, so I think if you were already using all the products that were in the bundle, mm -hmm. maybe you're going to come out ahead. But I think it was few and far between that were doing that. Right. Like most people, you know, they were standard, standardizing around the hypervisor, but you know, there might have been a certain like threshold where, for instance, the cost of doing like the hyperconverged storage from VMware, the vSAN product, might have been more expensive than moving back to like a dedicated storage system. I've talked to a lot of customers like that in the past. And so when they have to then assume the cost of that component they're not using, they're coming out a little bit behind. So they have to make the decision, like, do we re-architect, do we change like our underlying infrastructure in order to take advantage of what we're going to be paying for anyway, or not? Um, and so that's a hard decision for a lot of customers. Um, the client that I was talking about earlier, they did say that their cost is going to go up, um, but for them, they're looking at it as a value play. Like they're not looking at, you know, just on cost, they're look they're looking at what does this enable for us. Okay, so their TCO would go up, yeah. but the overall value sounds like cloud. The right. overall value, <laughs> and uh, and so, but in, in in a lot of cases, customers. I mean, it's not a simple. It actually, it is a simple decision not to migrate because yeah. migrations are so painful. And if I mean, they are, inertia matters, right? Yeah, like, <laughs> and if they are going to migrate, you know, where do they go? They go to Nutanix. They go to the cloud. They yeah. maybe go to OpenShift. They maybe go to. You know, Proxmon, which is, you know, you, yeah, right. you could take that route, SUSE, Ubuntu, there are options out there. Yeah. But then when you look at them all, you say, hmm, maybe the grass isn't greener. I don't know, what are your thoughts? Well, I mean, you, you also have to look at what, you know, Broadcom was looking to do with the VMware product. And in the past, you had things like ESXi, which you could run for free, right? And 
I remember I used to be an IT consultant. I dealt with some very small shops, and I literally had some ESXi servers just to take advantage of the virtualization. And I was manually handling the moving and all of that stuff that you get with like the full vSphere license. Um, there's a whole lot of small businesses and even medium-sized businesses that are not using those full suite of um, capability. They were just really using ESX, ESXi, vSphere, and they're probably going to be looking for something different because essentially what we're looking at is this is focused on enterprise environments. Like the, the goal here is to provide an environment that is rock solid, fully featured for a premium price, honestly. Yep. And, you know, I, I think that's what we're seeing. A lot of the disruption, a lot of the frustration we're hearing in the market is that it takes away a product that a whole lot of businesses were dependent on. And so they start looking at Proxmox. They start looking at alternative solutions. Honestly, like the people that are looking at Nutanix are, you know, it, it's around the same cost when you look at it. Yeah, so, so that's yeah, going to be like, you know, were, were they just kind of upset by VMware? Yeah, right. <laughs> Protest the, vote. The, yeah, yeah. The, the history of VMware, John, is amazing. You, you saw it in, in Silicon Valley. Diane Green sells for whatever, 630, 635 million. Joe Tucci, you know, picks up the yard <laughs> sale. there, right? And then she has uh, buyer's remorse or seller's remorse. It basically funds. EMC for a decade, yep. right? Funds Dell's, you know, re restructures their balance sheet. It's really been VMware's been a historic remarkable. icon yeah. in the industry, and I think Broadcom's going to do the same. And I think if you're looking at how they're separating the chip business, mm -hmm. just another ecosystem partner, but I'm sure they have some back door side doors, but it doesn't matter. They're going to build a business and lock in mm -hmm. the infrastructure value. And I think that's the key conversation now. We were kind of having it before we came on camera is that VMware is nested. I mean, I remember back in the enterprise days, we wanted to change one router, Cisco router, it was a two month migration, right. just to talk about it. Yeah. Never mind. And there's a take cost out. to that migration. Uh, like, never mind VMware, they're running all the apps. Yeah. So you can't take out the, the bloodstream. Mm -hmm. I mean, but, it's really, really hard to switch. So I think the TCO, they probably have their internal TCO already done. Yeah. If you guys probably didn't, you guys probably did a TCO. And you say, okay, five year migration. Well, five years, yeah. we don't even know it's going to be different in six months with right. AI. So yeah. you can't do a migration. Migration, yeah. if you're running full scale VMware, uh, well, I just don't see it. I just can't see a customer. I think you got to bite the bullet, mm -hmm. negotiate hard, pay the tax, yeah. and then bet the ranch that VMware will deliver product upgrades on yeah. the roadmap. Right. And I would look at the roadmap. That would be to me, the difference between CA, because mm -hmm. the CA scar tissue <laughs> is out there for the, all the Broadcom yeah. And, yeah. and semantic, mainly CA where they just basically gutted it and tax everyone. VMware, if they have a roadmap, Dave, that's my proof point. Mm -hmm. If I'm a customer, okay, I'll pay the tax, what's in it for me? Yeah. I better have the payback with product value yeah. on the table, show me. Well, not, not like the old VMware. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. you know that's the shine. that's what Hawk Tan meant by the shiny new toy. Right, right. We're not we're gonna we're not gonna just give you vSphere and then hope you buy into the hype. Yeah. Well, I mean, I think that also kind of says something about like Broadcom's view on what R and D dollars are for. Like they only want to invest in what customers are going to pay for. They're not gonna run a whole bunch of like independent primary research on like how hypervisors should work. They're going to talk to their customers and say, yeah. hey, what are the features you actually want? We're going to put that on our product roadmap. Yeah. Um, and so it's going to be a leaner like R&D budget. And pragmatic yeah. too. I mean, they, they, I got to give them credit. On the Broadcom side, chip yeah. side, they're all meat and potatoes. Yeah, yeah. Chips got to be, because their horizon's out. They got to they make the right bet and they do a ton of customer yep. research. Yeah. And they get in front of the tech. They're known for a good product. But then, you know, for them, like, when they scope down and kind of look at the top of the pyramid with their customers, that means that they can have kind of a, a thicker relationship with them and they can build the product for them easier. It, it's much easier to manage, say, you know, one to 5,000 customers than, say, yeah. 15,000 to a million. <laughs> like, so, 
from an investment perspective, right. we were talking about this before, the value of VMware was always locked inside of EMC, and then it used to be, the narrative used to be, if you want to buy VMware cheaply, buy EMC stock, because there was a conglomerate tax. And then the same thing happened with Dell. If, if, and, and so, when VMware became, a, finally again, a public company, right. I think the management said, well look, EMC and then Dell have been siphoning off the cash for years. Yep. EMC neutered Siphoning off the cash. And they had, I mean, <laughs> Dell, was, it was a piggy bank for, yeah. for Dell. And so I think the management felt like, okay, hey, we can actually run our business and keep our own cash, and that's a really good business, and it was a good business. It's interesting to me that Hoctana's basically coming to say, this business has way more potential. Right. We're going to jack this thing up to 60% operating margins, yeah. just like our semiconductor business, and really unlock the value. And that's exactly what's happening yeah. right now. And you know, as long as he keeps the TCO for running a workload under the cost of the public cloud and under the cost of like comparable competitors, he's good. But the, the bar was low. I mean, like, like yeah. you were saying, essentially this was you know, the, the discounted like enterprise virtualization suite for Dell and EMC, and they used it to sell hardware. They used it to sell the other yeah. parts of their infrastructure. They, the price was artificially kept low, and essentially, Hoctan is allowing to figure out like, you know, will, will it sustain the higher price? I think when you talk about the inertia, when you talk about how well embedded it is within the tech stack, yeah. The answer is probably going to be yes. And if you look at how their ecosystem is like lowered, lowered down in terms of volume, yeah. pre pre Broadcom was a, let a thousand flowers bloom and attached to that backbone of subsidized VMware right. to grow overall, rise the tide. Yeah. Not only for those guys, but for the ecosystem. So now, it's, now it's engineering the solutions. No more MDF. You engineer into our platform. Yeah. And, so. and, and before we get off the financial piece of it, I just want to say so when. When Oracle bought Sun, they bought it for basically net of the cash on the balance sheet for about seven billion dollars. And a lot of people said that was a stupid acquisition and ah, Sun's a mess. Remember they had all the low end Intel servers, they got rid of those. Oracle took a seven billion dollar acquisition and immediately, instantly turned it into about 35 billion uh, in terms of market capitalization because it was trading at a premium because it was a software company. Broadcom's trading at about 20 times revenue, roughly, back in the Mac, Mac, napkin math. I mean, if, even if, if Broadcom can get VMware ARR to, to five billion, which is sort of their target, yeah. and, a, and, a, and I'm sure the revenue could be higher than that, that creates $100 billion of value for a you know, $63 billion acquisition, and, and if they get it to 10 billion, which, uh, what's VMware's revenue is over 10 billion now, mm. so I don't know how much of that they're going to keep, but now you're talking about creating $200 billion of value for shareholders, for 63 or 62 billion, whatever they paid, it's like a no-brainer for yeah. And also, the, also as we talked about in the cube intro segment, it's cyclical. So when when chips are down, software's up. Yeah. So it's counter cycle on the business model. So so you're saying yeah. it gives balance to the oh, portfolio. Oh, balance for Broadcom because the, look at the. I mean, everyone who stayed at VMware and the so-called merger, oh, broad, the big bad Broadcom, they're rich now. I mean, yeah. let's face it, look at the stock price <laughs> from the deal. Yeah. I mean, you got some happy VMware employees right now who stuck around. Yeah, yeah you're right, it was like probably maybe a $200 billion valuation, maybe 300, now it's 700 plus <laughs> since the yeah. acquisition, since the last two years since they announced so the acquisition. When, if the semi has a trough, Software is up because that's the cyclical nature of software and chips. Yeah. Yeah. So it's the genius move at all, you know, so I love it. Yeah. I mean, to me, I love it. I've always liked that deal. What else are you doing research-wise? Uh, so I'm looking at this thing that I refer to as the continuous resilience cycle and really talk, talking to people about like abandon the idea of recovery and disaster recovery and think of resilience as starting at that day zero design phase where you're choosing where the platform is, what you're going to run, how you're going to run it, and then going into the build and deploy phase and figuring out like how do you test workloads before they're put into production so you avoid things like, you know, having security software that shuts down, you know, the entire <laughs> Kernel access. Industry. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, we'll not name names, right? Like, but the, the idea that you can front load a lot of those decisions to have more and more resilient workloads in general, and then pulling that through 
the day two operate phase where, you know, this is where we think about it normally. You have like site reliability engineering, you have people that are kind of iterating for resilience and production, and then you have the implementation of things like yeah, after, after action reviews, but then completing that cycle and taking recommendations, not just for how you run the workload, but how you might design and deploy it. Awesome, well I mean I think to me, the analyst side of the business right now that we're doing is going to come back down to TCO. Mm -hmm. You guys, I think I, you know, VMware needs to get in front of their customers to show them, Dave, look at the value is shifting. Right. Engineered ecosystem together, not just hawking product and being yeah. a marketing event. I think this show turns into a real conference where it's like engineering conversations, kind of like the old old early days of VMware, you know, when, when it was going. I think they could make that case, John. I mean, as we all know, the, the capital cost and the acquisition cost are a small component of the TCO. Yeah. I mean, even Oracle, you, you can look at, you can even, where, where license costs are actually a pretty large portion of the TCO, you could still make a case for consolidation and agility and yeah. some of that other business value that you were talking about. And I think make a pretty strong business case for those customers that are all in, Brent, as you were saying. Yeah, and I think like beyond the idea of TCO, you also have to talk about what sort of business options does the technology enable? And get that conversation to start happening between your IT folks and your business folks so that you don't have that divide in your business where business is just asking tech to do stuff and you can actually talk about how do I bring a platform in that's going to enable a future for my business rather than just locking me into technical debt. Well Brent, great to have you on. Yeah. Final word on, the, on this segment. What are you working on? What's cool? What's the coolest thing you're working on right now for uh, research? What are you digging into? <laughs> well, like I was saying, I'm, I'm working on this continuous resilience cycle. I'll be presenting that at our Forrester Summit in a couple weeks. Um, as far as like current research plan, I'm doing some evaluative research around data resilience suites. Yeah. You know, you might think of them as like enterprise backup, but they kind of do a little bit more than yeah. just backup these days. Um, and then next year, I'll be doing a storage arc. So awesome. Well, thanks for coming on theCUBE, appreciate yeah, it. Good to have you. Good Thank commentary. You very much. Great conversation about what's going on at VMware, here, now part of Broadcom. As the ecosystem and the customers settle in to the new normal, a lot of data being shared on theCUBE here. I'm John Furrier with Dave Vellante. Thanks for watching.